strictly necessary to configure the remote address information. So you can configure either the port mapping or use the P2P traversal service on our OMIPTBX. So the first step is, are you going to show you how to configure the P2P traversal service in our OM? Um, okay, so the first thing is that you have to log in as admin on your uh, OM IPPBX. Then on the web GUI, uh, you have to um, go to, yep, to the device uh, address, then type cloud and that slash cloud HTML. So here, you have to make sure that the cloud service and the status is connected successfully. Okay, so this is the first step. So after ensuring this uh, cloud service is enabled and connection is successful, so you have to go back to the menu. Yep. So on basic remote access page, you can see the P2P traversal page. So make sure that this one is enabled. See, you have to enable that and try to save. Then after that, Make sure you have to reboot it to make sure that the line connection or shall we say the status is successful. So in this stage, you are prohibited from doing anything from, from your box. So just to wait that the device is rebooting successfully. Then we have to go back on, on the basic remote page to make sure that the status of P2P traversal is successful. So, yep, usually it takes about um, less than a minute that uh, your device will reboot. So you have to be patient for a little bit patient to, to ensure that device is properly working. Okay, so log in as admin. W. Oops, sorry. Uh, J43Y. Okay. So go to the basic remote page. Yep, here. Make uh, you have to ensure that the status is successful. So as you can see from this page, uh, the OM already has the register for external terminal. So this one is a uh, uniquely generated domain name. So this will be used for the SIP extension registration. So this domain name will be used to register your SIP phone or so, uh, your mobile uh, extension to our OM IPPBX. Okay, so let's start on how to register, shall we say our IP phone. So I have here my IP phone. Yeah, as you can see, the line is inactive. So let's try to find, okay, the extension on the OMIPPBX. Okay, so we will use line uh, two, which is uh, number 302. Then make sure that the P number is 579119. Okay, so we have to fill in this information here, fill in the user domain name using the display name, uh, the 302 and the password. And from the server address, you have to use the unique generated domain name. So this is the one that you have to, to, to copy. You can copy this one, see here. You can click that and it can copy the register for external terminal. So this is again, the domain name that you will use on the line of the RP, uh, NRP phone. Okay, so here I have to input the server address. Then make sure that the server port is 5090. That is the server port to be used for our P2P traversal service. So after that, these are the informations that is very important for the SIP terminal. So you have to register or activate the line. So let's see if the line will be active. 
or will be registered. Yep. So as you can see here, the line is already registered and we have to verify that in OM. It, it shows the same. So you have to go to the extension. Yep. So as you can see here, the line is already registered to our OM. Okay, so now we I will show you on how to register the remote gateway. Um, okay, I have my gateway here. So let me see if we can use this. Yeah, okay, we have a active gateway. Okay, Q0. Yep. Oh. So I will try to use this gateway, maybe using the line which is offline here, 306. So line 306 is using the um, password, password 094015. So that is line 306. So we will use this information together with the domain name from our OM. Okay, so I have to put the domain name in the register server. Then I want to register the gateway per gateway, the MX8G. So I will use the 306. And the password is uh, 094015. I have to do that. Okay. So here you can see the call status to make sure that the registration is successful. So on my on the part of the remote gateway MXHG, the register status is successful. Then once again, you have to verify that on our OM IPPBX. So you have to refresh, try to see if the IP extension 306 is online. So here we have registered already our uh, remote MX8G. Okay, so now another one is how to register our, I mean, mobile extension. So basically, we have uh, the capacity that if you have the Wii uh, soft phone on your Android or iOS phone, you can register that to our OMIPP Bex. So make sure um, that you have enabled the mobile way way. So here, let us try to find a device. Okay, we have already one that is already. Okay, here, this one is the um, code that you can scan on your way way phone. Okay, I have my phone. Let me share my screen on my phone to demonstrate how to do it. Okay, for a while, let me share my phone via zoom okay I'll share okay share Google screen yeah so this is my screen on my mobile phone and I have to show yeah as you can see I have 301 but I want to register 305 so Weiwei can support up to three accounts I need to add an account. Yep. Just press the scan. Yeah, here. I'm ready to scan. And I need to open my... Um, oh, where is that? Okay. For a while. Yeah, I need to open the code. Try to see. As you can see on my screen, uh, this is the extension 305. So automatically, we input the credentials of the line 305, the password, and the unique generated domain name. So let us try to see if we can register. Okay, there you go. So as you can see that on the line, the 305 is successfully registered to our OM. So let's go back to our OM IPPBX if to see really if the device has successfully uh, registered or online. So let me share my screen again on my IPPBX. Okay, on my IPPBX, we have used the uh, 
305. Try to see if it is online. Okay. So as you can see here, the line is already successfully registered with the logo Weiwei. So that is a uh, sign that this extension is using the mobile app. So it is registered on our OMIP PBX. So yeah, that is uh, that is how we registered using our P2P traversal. So remotely, it has nothing to do with the port mapping, as you can as I I show you. Just simply a scan feature. It's very easy. It's just a normal procedure that we are paying on the um, uh, our bills, just simply scanning the code from OM, IP, PBX. So again, with the use of our P2P traversal service or the NAT traversal service, we were able to um, solve the problems during the actual uh, deployment. First, you don't have to uh, set up the port mapping. You don't have to uh, set up a fixed public IP address. Second, even though if the network is a very complex or have some multi-level of firewalls, you can register to our uh, OM. And last but not the least, you don't have to hire or to tap someone that is a high professional IT staff just to do or some configurations and OM. So yeah, that is um, how New Rock offers our services regarding to the not traversal technology. So I think that's it. And I hope you were able to part some important um, ways on how to configure the P2P. And if you have some questions, I'm very much uh, happy or obliged to try my best if there are some questions. Thank you, Romel. Uh, now we have a question. Uh, does it need to connect to the OM to public internet? Could you help answer that? Thank you. No, just have to make sure that it is connected to the internet. Yeah, so you don't have to set an IP, a fixed IP address or anything that to so make. Again, you have to make sure that the remote access, the, the cloud service is successfully connected and also the status for the P2P is connected successfully. So that is the first step, first two steps. OK, thank you. Even after connecting this one, is there any port required to open? Uh, the port? Yep. Yeah. Uh, our NAT traversal service, as you can see here, we use uh, 5090. That's uh, make sure that on maybe on the provider side or on the network side, you have restrict the 5090. So please make sure that this port is open or accessible. Uh, you, uh, that means uh, uh, on, is there any port redirection I'm asking from the, uh, so we, do we record any public IP for the same? No, no need, no need. Okay, okay. And uh, what about the, these cloud service charges? Um, for the cloud service it... charges, mm -hmm. you can ask the sales. Uh, sales will provide you about that. Uh, maybe uh, is it depend upon the users or the device? How would it be like? Uh, it is a link by device. A link by device, okay. Yes. So as I have shown you, first step is to make sure that the cloud service is enabled. You can enable this one successfully. Let me show you. So you have to type that. Uh, as of now, is, it a, is there any trial available for uh, testing this? Yes, definitely we have a offer. And with regards to that, I would suggest to contact directly ourselves. OK, thank you, Vector. I hope this is helpful. Uh, do we have any more questions?
for the pricing questions, please contact Bella or Hannah. Uh, they could provide more details for you. One more question. Uh, we have already won uh, all the PPX. So can we test with the same, the same cloud options? Um, basically, for as I've mentioned, uh, the cloud services is binded for for each device. So uh, you cannot just maybe one service for all the OM devices. It's 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 binded per device. Okay, that means uh, all the device has that built-in features. Uh, yes, yes, we have that. Okay, okay thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you guys for setting aside your time for joining us today. This video will be uploaded on YouTube. You can check the New Rock Technologies channel on YouTube to find more solutions and details about the AAT Travel Show service. We look forward to seeing you in the future training sessions. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Bye bye. Keep safe. Bye bye. Bye. Romel, are you still there? Hey. Uh, yes. Yep. Hi. Uh, I am from Paddy. He asked. Oh. Yes, I'm. I'm in in Philippines. Paddy. Hi. Oh, I think. Okay. Um, thank you for supporting. I'm gonna end this session.